Last but not least, please, guys, right now, if you support me, especially in light of I couldn't even stream last night because of all this bullshit, please tip me today. Tipping me is the best way that you can support me because, number one, those are funds I get right away that I can put towards things. Number two, within the next two weeks, all of my major bills are coming due, and I know I'm going to be short on cash, so please consider tipping me. The tips are helping me out tremendously. It's the reason why I basically got through this month. That was really rough, and I'm really, really, really worried about the next coming month, so please consider tipping me if you can, all right? So, that being said, tipping, a few things about it. It's so lovely when you act like you love me. You must think it's funny when I smile your way I need somebody Did you ever really love me? Cause as of today It seems that you don't look my way <laughs> Once a rainy day goes by Sometimes your name crosses my mind But it's all good <laughs> Said it's all good Cause it's so funny When you act like you love me But you're so lovely How could I ever all right, consider this just the uh, the appetizer, the sampler platter to what's going to come next, or what's going to come soon, I should say. Hey! <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News, the unreliable ones, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the newsroom, and welcome to the Galatopian News Network, your unreliable source for DSP News. This is the Snort Report. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are doing well. We are here. <laughs> oh boy, we are here with one of our favorites, Snorpernell, DSP. First video, <laughs> failed to get a thousand dollars. Where did the load go? <laughs> Second video, <laughs> DSP <laughs> promoting the lame interview, more begging and dry pay pigs. Now, I have already said that I was going to do a video on the um, the whole uh, hashtag cancel DSP situation so i'm still working on that it should be out uh hopefully soon hopefully and then i did say that i would go over the quartering quartering in dsp interview gout meets gout this is what happens when gout meets snort whatever they, they both got gout um <laughs> i'm gonna do that also so consider this as just a preview to that to that particular broadcast um yeah, so this is what it is. It's basically a sampler platter. So let's go ahead and get right into it, shall we? Uh, shall we? So, failed to get $1,000. That was off of the... Uh, what was that silly shit? That was the retrospective stream, which failed miserably. So, rip to that. And then where'd the load go? I guess that's I guess that's <laughs> Snorpernell's uh, cheekiness at the interview. So we'll see what comes out of that. And then Phil tried to promote that lame-ass interview, from what I've been told, and more begging and dry pay piggies. Phil, you're getting into the holidays. You bled these people dry all year. If you're expecting a big payoff at the end of the year, maybe you need to give them a rest. Maybe you need to give it a break. But Phil don't want to do that. He wants to have his little piggy hoof, you know what I'm saying, on the throttle all year long, like these people are just magically going to be able to pull money out of nowhere. And that's why money's low. I think it's it only makes sense, to be honest with you. And in truth, supporting Phil is just like another full-time job. He's as needy as any newborn child, and he's as demanding as any self-absorbed person could ever be. I, for, I personally don't think it's worth the trouble, to be honest, but... Uh, I guess you have to talk to like someone like Planet Jeff or something, see what their thoughts are. Golden Colts, any of those individual uh, exceptional individuals who decide to give him money on a regular basis. Uh, as it pertains to this quarterling or quartering interview, I'm gonna call him quarter pounder because that's really what he is anyway. Uh, the fact that they both have gout is hilarious, to be honest. But um, 
at least the quarter pounder seems to be more accepting of the fact, at least to my understanding, that, hey, I did this to myself. <laughs> Where Phil wants to blame dead family rem uh, family members. That's a thing. And, uh, yeah, I don't really have much to say about this shit. Let's just get into the videos. We'll see what comes out of it, if anything. <laughs> oh, boy, puns intended. And hopefully you guys are, uh, hopefully you guys' days are doing well and whatnot. Hopefully your week is going well, depending on when you see this. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can kind of brighten it up or at least make it a slight bit bear uh, bearable, if you will. Oh boy, it's early. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, uh, anything else? Any plugs or anything? Oh, uh, one more thing. The Agent Proper trailer will be at the end of the video. Uh, be it one of the be one of the end cards if you will uh please check it out if you have not okay i'd like to see this video get a lot of i'd like to see his video get a lot of support as well as any of the other uh top 10 worst moments of dsp over the last couple of years going from 2015 all the way up to 2018 so please be supportive of all of them uh if uh, enough support is given to his trailer i will uh, go over two of those videos of, of two of the older ones uh, more than likely the 2015 2016 uh, top 10 worst moments I don't know if I'll turn them into a they're probably gonna be a gout miss uh, <laughs> it'll probably be part of the 12 day a gout miss I'll probably that's probably what I'm gonna bring up doing with those um, if uh, you know I just want to see support up there I don't have a number of where it needs to be for it to get there but uh, just show your support Agent Proper makes great content, so please go over there and support. If you're not a part of the agency yet, please sub, uh, please subscribe. It means a lot, not just to him, but to all of the other fellow agents that are part of there. And uh, I'm uh, I'm the first special agent, so I obviously feel a certain type of way about it all. And um, yeah, like uh, it's very much appreciated. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Snort Report, and this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network in Productions. You guys all know the slogan. I don't spend no bacon cooking yet. I'm about to get on that. Before I do so, Snortbucks Coffee. I love Snortbucks Coffee. It's been a pretty busy week and whatnot, and I'm, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm finding, finding a, that I'm, I'm being drained a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Trying to do all this work over here at uh, GTG Network and Productions, and then at the DIA, and then my own my own life and shit. It's a lot going on. But Snowbooks Coffee helps me get through the day. But today, though, today, we're going to actually go back and uh, try our uh, our new 100% yogurt smoothies. I'm going with a strawberry banana with a hint of, uh, or with a splash, if you will, of white chocolate. It's actually really, really good, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, it's actually really, really good. So, uh, you guys get a chance, check that out. Like I said, we're constantly expanding over here as, uh, as Snorbucks Coffee. Because uh, that's what you do, if you can. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, time to watch my work. God, dog, I'm extra tired today for some strange reason. It's so odd. Like you love me, but you're so lovely. How could I ever look away? The other girls love me when you love me. Oh, baby, tell me what is it gonna take? So lovely, lovely, lovely But do you want me, want me, want me Please take this pain away You're so lovely, lovely, lovely Why do you want me, want me Alright, that's... Sounds good to me That is right, ladies and gentlemen, today all day long, we're going to be strolling down memory lane. First of all, this is going to be a very chill stream. It's going to be a stream. Oh boy, this is this is going to be a disaster just waiting to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with one of our favorite Snorpanel. DSP. <clears throat> Failed to get a thousand dollars. And where did the load go? Oh boy. <laughs> here we go. 
no gameplay at all. It's just going to be us watching back my videos and content from the last 11 years that I've been a content creator on the internet. I think people were like falling asleep or something. All right. Now, my hope is that today people will be joining me over the course of the day, various people, and hopefully some of you will contribute positively here on the streams. Money grubbing beggar. Talk about a cash grab. That is just it's just ca it's a cash grab. It's a blatant cash grab. It's all it's always a money grab. It's always, you know what I mean? It's always got to be make as much money 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 as much possible. Um you guys know the ways that you can contribute during my streams, cheering, subbing, and tipping, right? Now, in particular, today, the most, quite frankly, the big... Now, I want to also put it out there that this pre-stream was almost like two hours before he even went into the retrospective. Just throwing that out there. The biggest way that people can help today would be by tipping me. Give me money. Definitely. Uh, this is a day where I'm hoping I can raise a good amount towards, you know, everything coming the next month via tips. Tipping, I get the, the, the money right away. It goes towards bills immediately. In fact, I'm not exaggerating. After tonight's stream ends, and after I go eat dinner because I'm going to be starving, I have a big-ass stack of bills I have to pay, my month-end bills, because they're all due tomorrow. So I'm going to sit here and pay a bunch of bills, uh, and if you contribute today, it's going to help, okay? Hundred and thirty nine dollars out of a thousand. This idiot could have just had a regular stream. He could have had a, a regular streaming day and probably made more money. Holy shit. That's horrible. But that should tell you though too, like how little the demand is for that. I mean shit, some chill streams he can pull that. Wow. Alright. Mr. Olympia. To me a dollar. He says, do you plan on ordering exercise bike and weights for yourself? As someone who's to work out to the extreme, you should really listen to the old proverb, a sound mind and a sound body. Your sedentary lifestyle is not healthy for you as a 40-year-old. I hear you. I understand what you're saying. I agree with you. I wish I had time and or means to do this. I don't. I have to be here six days a week full-time streaming in order to make ends meet, and even then I can't. Hence, today's attempt to raise some funds via the stream. Um, there's not much I can do about that. Maybe, uh, you know, in the long run, that will change. That's my goal, is that in the long run, I can get to a better position where I don't have to go crazy. Um, so, yeah, yet again, so as Snorpadon said, he can watch Netflix, WWE, for hours on end, but we can't work out. Can't order himself some weights and work out. And then says he has to work six days a week to make ends meet, despite the fact that he's not making ends meet. Then how do you have time to sit on your ass and watch Netflix and all these other subscription programs that you have if you're barely making ends meet? Like how are you barely how are you are you barely putting food on the table? Is that the reason why you don't shower every day? Because you only have like there's only enough hot water for for Catherine and you just kind of sneak in warm water whenever you get a chance? Like, I don't understand. He makes it sound like he's damn near a peasant, but then He's doing, he's doing everything but being a peasant. I'm so confused. You know, and, and be working as much as I have, so I have more free time and I have more flexibility. But as of right now, all my time and energy is going to the streams. I agree a sedentary lifestyle is not good. I completely agree with you. If anything, the one thing I can Wait, say- Wait, you used to big up that shit all the time. And now all of a sudden it's not good anymore. Which means that the theory that Catherine was trying to get you to work out and lose weight and to get healthy basically like you losing weight doesn't mean shit if you're not actually healthy so it's true then that she was trying to actually get you healthy but yet you're still trying to fight it because you want to come up with every excuse in the book on why you can't walk around your neighborhood for 30 minutes why you can't do any push-ups and sit-ups you don't necessarily need weights all he needs is probably an hour's worth of cardio and probably equal amount of uh of some type of genesthetics. He can use his own body weight. You see how fucking wormy his arms look. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's all he really needs. Some push-ups, some sit-ups, some crunches for sure. Maybe some planks. And a decent amount of cardio. He can doesn't have to go out running. He doesn't even have to jog. He can walk. He can build himself up to it. But he can't do any of that because he has to work. Despite the fact that he sleeps until what? 10 o'clock? 
ten thirty sometimes. T- let's say ten o'clock, and he doesn't go to bed till four or five o'clock in the morning. Hmm. Is my one day out a week that I have in my but life? Keep in mind, though, ladies and gentlemen, this is the same idiot who says that he can't vacuum his room at night because it's going to wake up his neighbors and they're going to complain. Think about that. Because we have only the one day to get a ton done, it's a lot of activity. <laughs> oh no. I'm moving and walking. The entire day is like motion, 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 you know, walking and moving. I'm burning calories. My body is getting that one day I get like all my exercise in because I'm constantly doing stuff. Last week, we not only had to do our usual stuff, we had to do a Costco run. So here I am carrying heavy shit and everything all day. I'm like the man's man. I am the strongest. I am very much a man of the people. I haven't been the same man. Like I said, at least he's, uh, at least he's gotten smart and he's starting to buy stuff in bulk. Honestly, he should invest in a deep freezer though. Like three, $400. And then he can pack away a bunch of stuff in there. Chicken, some pork, some beef, you know what I'm saying? Frozen vegetables, stuff like that. Instead of what he, you know what I'm saying? It would just give him more room. He could make his money work a little harder for him. But that's just a suggestion from a brain dead idiot. Since I saw you coming in, I'm just fucking a dude. But I'm a man enough to admit it. And I was like, damn, you know, it's a good workout, but you're right. It shouldn't just be like that. It should be essentially two, three times a week at the very least. I'm getting physical activity in my body, and I don't, and it sucks. Eventually, I'd love to change that. Right now, it's not possible. Crazy cop. So, when's it going to be possible? Oh, I don't have to work as often, so me and Kat can just go out, and we actually go out and do fun stuff now, so now I don't have to worry about working out at all, because now I'm outside the house twice a week now, guys. See? He's going to die of a heart attack, or some shit like that. The, he, he's literally giving... You know what he reminds me of? He's been, And I'm, I'm noticing a lot of the correlations because I'm watching a lot of... Um, what's that dude's name? Zachary Michael and Michael B. Petty. They're like two of the... I watch a little bit of Goldie too. But they're kind of like the... They're like the, the three people that are prominent. Also, KDW. KDW is like the Snor Purnell of the Amber Lynn community. Uh, great editing and whatnot. Uh, well, I guess she's a cross between Snor Purnell and like Mighty D. Great editing, either which way. Anyway, I've been paying attention to a lot of the Amber Lynn and her nonsense as of late. And um, Amber Lynn and Foodie Beauty, now that I think about it, come up with these same type of just ratchet excuses on why they can't do shit. It's a lot of misdirection. It's a lot of bullshit. I kind of want to go over uh, an Amber Lynn video, or Amber Lynn video, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But you guys watch Tevin, so you guys already see it. I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll slide one of those things in there. But it's the same type of just mental gymnastics from someone who definitely ain't working out. It, it's really, really bad. It's really, really crazy what's going on with her right now, too. Amber is just Amber just flipping the fuck out over there. I don't know what she's doing. It's super silly. And now that Destiny is back in the picture a little bit, kind of, which is her ex-girlfriend, by the way, uh, it makes things super interesting. I feel bad for Becky. I really do. Should send Becky a Snorbucks coffee. I'll make her feel better. Anyway, <laughs> something to look out for. <laughs> Ask Tevin, he'll tell you about it. I'm sure he keeps up with some of that nonsense. Just resell for 24 months. He says, hell yeah, Phil, two years, baby. Thank you very much, Crazed Carnivore. You're the lucky winner for today. You've just won a lifetime supply of burps on the stream. Oh, maturity level of some people. Julius Caesar tipped me a dollar. Listen to this. He says, are you related to me? If you would like more Twitch subscribers and patron pledges, perhaps an edited video such as a Hateful Truth review shall encourage everyone to subscribe or pledge. Uh, you know, I used to do that. I used to love doing it, in fact. I used to really enjoy uh, doing edited style videos. I used to sit here and what he I... He didn't do actually what you used to do. He asks you, why, why don't you do it now? Yet again, it's similar to what they, what they say about Amber, too. Like, fucking A. The correlation between these low cows are crazy. It don't even matter about the weight. It's just silly. It was, you know, probably four or five days a week, I would do full days of streaming, but then there was maybe two nights a week where I would do edited content, and I would put out a nicely edited video. Whether it was a game review, a countdown. I liked doing that. I absolutely did. I mean, Adobe Premiere Pro was a really nice program that I used to use. It was really streamlined and worked well on my PC. 
and that was about a year to year and a half that I had a good time doing it. Sadly, YouTube put an end to all of that. When, number one, they demonetized my edited content channel for no reason. I'm not Mr. Kermode. They didn't do that, by the way. The reason why we know that is because when Spamgate happened and he needed a channel to put his streams on, he went right to KO Gaming. So how has this, how's the channel been demonetized, blacklisted, delisted when that was the first place he went? Huh. That's weird. Why didn't he put all of that on the King of Hate vlogs? They were that wasn't deprioritized. That wasn't uh, demonetized or anything. But he didn't think about putting it there. He thought about putting it on KO Gaming. Huh? Makes you think. For sure. I'm not a guy who's here to put out overproduced content that was obviously created to make money. I'm just a guy here enjoying games and having fun on a daily basis. What happened is they went by and basically demonetized every single video, and I had to dispute that. And they would reinstate the ads after like four days. So, good luck having a new edited video you upload. It immediately gets demonetized for no reason. You have to dispute it, and then four days later they put the ads on it, but you got 80% of your views within the first 24 hours. So, it didn't matter. You made no money on it, right? It's not about the money. It's not. I'm not here to take a paycheck. So, I was working my butt off on, on this Which channel. Which goes back to what I've told you guys before, that he doesn't do anything for free. There has to be a payoff at the end for anything and everything he does. If not, he's not going to do it. Well, and for absolutely no reason, you know, YouTube red flagged it and basically made it so every video got demonetized. And there's nothing I could do about it. So I gave up on that, you know. I, I wasn't going to go crazy. Um, I absolutely would not, didn't want to do that. Uh, work on videos, go crazy, putting effort into them just to get nothing out of it because YouTube sucks. I'll be real honest with everyone. Just making an edited YouTube... Which proves that he didn't just fall into that whole YouTube thing. When it came to the gaming aspect of it, he was already getting paid for his vlogs because that's the only thing you could monetize. And obviously, he didn't take him; it didn't take him much time to go ahead and monetize those, right? But that gaming shit, he was he was building up on that. He was exp he was hoping that was going to be something that was going to be something profitable later. And it's funny how right around the time he loses his job is the is right around the time he decides doing this full time because he didn't like that job anyway. He liked the money. But he said that he wasn't getting the recognition he deserved, and I guess he thought he was better than his father, so he should be making six figures, and his father could fuck off with that. I don't know. But it, it's it, something to think about, it, ladies and gentlemen. Something to think about. YouTube video is very... Maybe that's the reason why he doesn't like being called Dave, because I think his father's name is like David or Dave. Um, so maybe that's the reason why Phil doesn't like, his, uh, doesn't like that Dave name. He probably thinks he's the bigger and better model. Obviously he's not. Your father has three, allegedly three herniated discs, and he can still make shit happen. You only have one, and you act like the scorn little bitch you are? I don't know, Scooby. I don't know. Easy. Doing live improv reactionary commentary is tough. The hard shit is sitting here playing the raw games. That's the hard part. Streaming is way harder than just editing videos for YouTube. Okay? It is. Real talk. So I stopped doing it, and now I became a full interactive streamer two and a half years ago, and I'm not going back. You know, I'm just not. I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I love the interactive streams. People seem to love the interactive streams, so that's what we're going for. Okay? Uh, Hodor Targ cheered and said, Cat says you have holes in your clothes and can't afford new, but you can afford multiple subscriptions to streaming services. Did you finally cut some of those, like the expensive Hulu subscription, so you can ease your bills and buy some clothes? I've been exposed on stream! Hodor Targ, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Um, <laughs> what on earth are you talking about, dude? Uh, first of all, I don't have 100 streaming subscriptions. First of all, I'll tell you. I have Netflix, and I have WWE Network, all right? We have Hulu. Cat pays for Hulu, mostly because there's a lot of shows on there that she likes, and she wanted to do that. It's funny how now she, play, she pays for Hulu, though. Never said that before. Never once mentioned, mentioned that at all, about Cat paid for that. But now, all of a sudden, oh, Cat pays for that one. <laughs> Idiot, you're in the same household. You guys theoretically share the same income if if you're struggling, she's struggling, and vice versa. What a fucking idiot. So we split the cost. That's all we have. I don't have cable. Uh, I don't have anything else. So essentially, I got rid of cable, which was costing me like 60 to $80 a month, and I got placed, what is it, PS View? That was like $40 a month. I got rid of four, I got rid of that, and now I have two streaming services that are like $20 a month between the two of them. I have cut down my cost significantly, all right? Um, 
You are being absolutely ridiculous. You're over the top. You're crazy. You're out of line. Sir, I'm not going to have it. Stop it right now. Theoretically, he's just paying the same amount that he was paying when he had a PlayStation View or whatever it's called. That's it. He, the way he, the way, at least to me, the way he tried to word it was I dropped cable, that's $60, $80, and I dropped PlayStation View, which was another 40 It's almost like he tried to combine all that together instead of looking at them as separate entities in itself. Don't make me get angry, okay. It's like a five-year-old kid, you know? Um, Tim the Mailman. Oh my god, listen to this, alright? Just listen to this. Tim the Mailman tipped me a dollar and says, Would you consider a release the trolls event for a tip goal like other content creators have done where you unban some of the most notorious trolls, see how long each one lasts before they get banned again? No! Stupid! First of all, I don't keep track of the most notorious fucking trolls. After they're banned, they're banned. I don't even know who the fuck they are anymore. Some of them come back- You, uh, you know he's lying. You know he takes mental notes on who's who and why they got banned. That's how he calls people out all the time. That's why he knows who uh, who certain people are when they change names. So let's be honest. Let's 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 not act like your life is so good and so important that you don't know what's going on. Jesus Christ. Later, months later, and ask for an unban, and I'll be like, okay, I'll be nice. I'll unban you and give you a second shot. But I'm not gonna do a mass unban like an idiot and just have these morons flood in and fuck my content up. I'm not a dumbass. So the answer there is no, that's really stupid. I don't care that the other content creators did it. Maybe they don't care about the quality of their streams and they just wanted to be completely liquid shit all over, like 360 Hershey squirts all over the fucking walls of their streams. That's fine, let them do it. Let them deal with mopping up that disgusting liquid mess. Uh, I'd rather just put out chill streams. Okay? <laughs> Alright, last, la we'll finish on, we'll finish on a funny note. All okay. Right. I have, I have, this is the most popular question. Okay. <laughs> You're right. Where did the load go? Oh, a tissue. Oh. Oh. Splashed, and then it got on my hand. So my hand's like sneaky, and it fucking splashed all over me. What the hell? It seriously, and splashed all over my face and my pants. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on. Okay, hold on. Drying myself off here. What the shit? Fucking exploded all over me. Jesus Christ. Okay. <sighs> Alright, I'm all right. I'm okay now. <laughs> I've, I've dried myself off. This thing goes poosh, all over me. Okay. Oh, Very okay. simple. Oh, <laughs> okay. Simple. Nothing, yeah. Yeah, nothing complicated, nothing crazy, a tissue. I, Hi. you know, I wasn't stupid. I'm not dumb, you know. It's hilarious. Yeah. I get so many questions. Phil, what Wait. Was I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. It went into a tissue. You you jerking off on stream wasn't stupid. wasn't dumb. But how you handled your load made sense. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. This interview must have been complete and total clown world. It must have been. Oh wow. You were watching when it happened. Oh, what Phil. were you watching? Will you share I, I, that? I don't, I don't even know. I can't. Here's what I can. Because here's Some how generic. I answer. He knows. <laughs> he knows. Uh, I kind of want to take some guesses, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna have to. I'm. 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 I'm asking. It's an option. You don't have to. I. I, I want to hear what some of the suggestions are that our boy right here might have been watching during his flapping event. If you guys want to think about it, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna put it out there. You can think about it, and then when I actually go over the stream itself, then then you can lay that in the comment section if you want, or if I decide to premiere it, I might premiere it. We'll see. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that yet, but uh, yeah. i if you or if you want to do both, like maybe because your, your your opinion might change, because you know me, it's probably gonna be a while till it comes out. So yeah, what do you guys think that that uh, Dark Side Phil was watching when he was unleashing the beast? Uh. What are your thoughts? I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to hear it. Let's see. I'm thinking... I don't know. I kind of want to say... I don't know. I'm going to think about that, actually.
Thanks. I swear, and the thing is, it's because you get a younger audience who are very immature, and they think it's some big production, what happened, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, most of us know, by the way, you and I are both in our mid-30s as men. We know how it I mean, We know how it goes, yeah. Right. It, yeah. It's like, it's just a thing. It's a frivolous thing. Get it over with, and then move on with your day, right? Yeah, this is it's on my schedule. You know, these I kids get... think that, like, I, like, I, apparently I, like, had aromatherapy candles in the background, <laughs> and I was, like, rubbing body oils on my body and getting all into it on the street. Oh, my God. Oh, look at the grease. The grease man. The man of grease, covered in grease. No, that would it have been something... amazing if it was, though. It was so stupid. It was a frivolous, stupid, stupid thing. And, you know, it's people, that's what they, oh, he, you know, he didn't even wash his hands because I had tissues, you know. What do you yeah, think I'm doing yeah. here? It's like, you guys are freaking out of your minds with the stuff that they make up about it. But you know what? Out of all that, it's... it's... <laughs> I didn't need to wash my hands because I had tissue. <laughs> oh shit! You really, you were really dumb enough to say that. So Phil, uh, you want to explain them sticky buttons of yours, then, buddy? You want to explain why that's a thing and why that's a problem? I think we have discovered, ladies and gentlemen, what happened to our uh, day one Sega Genesis Mini controller. I think we. The smoke, the smoking gun. <laughs> I think we got the wiener schnitzel. <laughs> of what that situation was. Oh my shit! Oh my god! Did you throw some water on your hands first before you tried it off there, big guy? Anything? All right, no problem. <laughs> Look how ashamed he looks. <laughs> Look how ashamed he looks. <laughs> Look at Jeremy sitting there looking at you. Look at you. I can't believe Quarter Pounder got you in this position. I really don't. Uh, from a, from someone who got beat up. He didn't get beat up, but he got smacked around by a chicken, by a dude in a dress. Um, he ain't got you in this position. <laughs> oh my, Phil. Look at you. Look at what he did to you. You want to you want to sit there and be mad at Tevin? Oh, oh, let me get together. You want to be mad? <laughs> you want to get mad at Tevin because Tevin tried to give you really really good advice back in the day, and he took the advice that he gave you. He tried to give you good advice about streaming. You didn't want to listen, so he applied it to make to make his streams better. He's done all of this, and you're mad at him for that. And because you think restreaming you mean shit, like it has any value. But yet, you're going to let Quarter Pounder here, okay? Quarter Pounder with no cheese, because he don't deserve cheese after he got beat up by that, by that, well, by, well after he got smacked around by that, uh, that dude in a dress. You're going to let him, let him sit here, have you looking just pathetic, talking about your load. <laughs> this is what you had Jeremy put you down to. Oh. Oh, that's <laughs> that's hurtful. <laughs> that's hurtful. Oh, oh. I need to see how many views that video has. That <laughs> it must be amazing. <laughs> Silly as it is, in the fact I know I'll, I'll never live it down. I laugh at it all the time. It's hilarious. How you got really is. lucky. I that's what really? I always. I don't see you laughing at it now. Come on, Phil, laugh with me. Get, get a get a nice healthy laugh from your from your gullet. I'll make you feel better. <laughs> about it. I was like, man, he's lucky his dog wasn't on camera. Like, right. You, you know? got, I mean, as unlucky as you were <laughs> to have the stream on, you are equally lucky that you didn't get a lifetime ban. You know what I Exa mean? Exactly. And it's a th That's another thing, too. So, I'll talk about it more when I actually go over the stream. But apparently, there are some stipulations that Quarter Pounder here had to agree to before he could interview Phil. And that's because Phil's a bitch. And uh, one of the things I'd like to point out is that $800 uh, interview fee. Also, I want to throw something else at, out at you. I'm sure it's already been brought up up to this point, but it's funny how Wings, after the Down the Rabbit Hole came out, Wings ends up having an a impromptu interview of sorts with Frederick not long after. Now, all of a sudden, Phil wants to do interviews. Real strange, huh? Very, very weird. I think that
People say, the, the people who spin it, did you know that Dark Side Phil is a chronic masturbator who does it in front of thousands of children <laughs> every morning? This is his ritual, and here's the evidence, and they show the screen capture of my face. You know? <laughs> and like, yeah. are you crazy? But people believe it because people have talked about it for three and a half years now, and they like yeah. they think that this is like something that, that it, what really happened, the true story is, it was early morning, the stream, had, I turn on my stream, and I play music. <laughs> now I play music. Back then, I just used to play like the PS4 dashboard theme while I run some promo ads over the screen to show, here, yo, know, go buy something from my Teespring store, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was running it, and I accidentally had left my webcam on from the night before <laughs> on the screen in the corner. I had no re no knowledge Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it, it's an honest, and it's a stupid, stupid, stupid thing to happen, and I know I'll never live it down. But it's not a big deal to me. Like, it was. I mean, is it embarrassing? Hell yeah. If anything, the one thing that, that's come out of it positive, if anyone asks me, what's the most embarrassing thing? Here, this is something really kind of strange, too. I, I kind of should just wait and bring this up at a later time. But if you guys remember, if you guys have actually seen the clip, right, in its entirety, the whole three minutes or whatever it was, no one ever said Phil was ever last. But, uh, Defiant Snow. Um, <laughs> You guys see that uh, Phil is constantly looking up into the side, as he usually does, right? And I'm thinking, either A, he didn't know OBS was on, but he says right here that he knew that the dashboard everything was on. So either he knew OBS was on, and he should have been able to see this in the preview, which, I, which is what I'm thinking. Or B, he's just out and out lying. Like... It don't make as often as he looks at OBS now. He did almost as almost as frequently back then, so he would have had to have seen his face in the preview window, right, of OBS. You know, the one that he's constantly checking to make sure OBS doesn't go down. How would he have missed something like that? I, I wish I had asked Tevin that question. Um, I guess I could tweet at him. Anyway, um, how would he have missed something like that? That sounds very, very strange. Now that I think about it, we'll dig, we'll deep dive in that a little bit later. But that sounds very, very peculiar. That ever happened to you, Phil? I don't have a hard time answering. I got <laughs> yeah, right yeah. away. But outside yeah. of that, like I was lucky. You're right. Like, I'm always smart. You notice today my webcam. You don't see anything below the belt here. Yeah. It's always like upper torso. <laughs> this is how it's always been. So I knew when people exaggerate for it to be something so ludicrous, it's like, did you actually even see what it was? Yeah. It's just my O face. That's all <laughs> it is. You don't see anything else. But people want to make it out like it's the worst, horrendously disgusting thing ever. You, you watch movies. Did you ever see American Pie? That fucking, yeah. fucking Jason Biggs did way worse than I did in that in that movie, and he got paid for it, and I didn't. So it's yeah. like, wait, you're gonna equate what you did to a scene in a movie? Why does he do this? Like, he... What? What? Well, I, I've never understood... And he, I don't know when he actually started doing it. I feel like he just started doing that recently. And that's why it started with that Howard Stern bullshit. But I never understood why he... Lately, though, he's been starting to move into TV and movies. Why he can equate something that happens to a movie... Or in a movie, I'm sure I should say. I apologize. To something that he's done and think that's gonna make sense, like that's gonna go over. That doesn't make any sense at all, dude. That makes no sense at all. It just means that you're fucking stupid. It means that's exactly what it means. It means you're fucking stupid that a grown ass man who makes his living online streamed himself to a hundred, couple hundred people jerking off. And you think that moment right there should be compared to what happened in American Pie with some dude pretending keyword fill. You know, kind of like how Panda and Cat have to fake it with you in bed. Pretending to stick his dick into a pie and orgasm off of it. You ever thought about that, buddy? You didn't? The next time you roll off of Cat or Catherine and she said you're the best, I want you to look deep into her eye. Look deep into her eyes. And you're going to see, more than likely, Tyrone's face. And you're going to hear me chuckling at you. Don't forget that. Well, I got yeah, paid, kind of. You know, I mean, it would have been amazing if there was aromatherapy and oils. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it will still always be... Panda's Tyrone, and Catherine is Jim. My fault. Either way, I'm still laughing at you in either one of those situations. Popular, but, you know, if it had been a big, big production, was there ever any, like... What the fuck did, did Twitch... So here's the other theory around it, is that Twitch was like, had some in-depth conversations with you about it. My position has always been, no fucking way, Twitch was like, yo, Phil, what the fuck? My <laughs> guess is it's been 
like totally generic. But what, what, what was there any communication at that time with Twitch or anything like that? Here we go, and here's a great answer. Get ready for this one, because this okay. is so hilarious to debunk all of it. I wasn't streaming on Twitch at the time. I was streaming on YouTube. Oh, I, there was oh two, there was yeah. There two you go. years that I wasn't streaming on Twitch because at one point Twitch had forced me to lower my bit rate. And I remember that. That was in the, yeah, I remember that. Someone did. They asked him to lower his bit rate. They didn't force him to do shit. They could have, but they asked him to bring his bit rate down. And he fucking had a hissy fit about it, saying, "Why can't? Why do other people get to do it and I don't?" And they were like, "Put your bit rate down, please." And he became a bitch about it and left. Probably. Asked about that. They, they basically came to one of my streams like a year before this had happened and said, you're, you're streaming too high. I'm like, dude, are you serious? Like other people are streaming way higher than me and my quality, if you make me lower, is going to look terrible. So I had issues. How would he know that too when he didn't watch other streamers back then either? Something to think about. With that. And I had left Twitch for two years. What a weird and thing to say. YouTube. How early was that? I can't even imagine somebody saying anything like that nowadays. That was late 2015. Fall oh, of 2015, okay. I was playing an Assassin's Creed game, and they told me to lower my bitrate, so I did, and my stream looked like shit, and I said, I'm out of here. And I left for two years. I didn't come back until early 2017. Huh. Um, but that's the thing. What, did Twitch say anything? No. Twitch wasn't involved. It happened on YouTube. That's funny, and yeah. Okay. The thing is, on YouTube, I didn't auto-archive anything when it came to the pre-streams, so yeah. there was nothing. The only people who got footage of this were people who literally stalk me every day, and they illegally record my streams. Um, it's Tevin's fault. Actually... Isn't that a lie, too? Because remember when he caught that community guideline strike after Spamgate? Didn't he catch the uh, Spamgate, by the way? It was when, uh... <laughs> oh, Spamgate. Spamgate was great. So, basically, our boy Phil lost DSP Gaming for a little bit, ends up getting it back, and then all at once, because this is how, how big brain Phil is, all at once re-enables all of his videos on his channel as soon as he got he gets the channel back now here's where spam gate and that community guideline strike kind of fall in place wasn't that flapping video one of the videos that ended up getting community guideline striked hence the reason why he privated it again so it was always available on the channel i mean he may have had it privated but it was still there it's still available so it was archived wasn't it fucking criminal just in case something like this happens and they boy did they get their jackpot that day oh, right? literally <laughs> it went everywhere viral within minutes it was everywhere all over the internet and you know for me it's like then that's the thing the slander oh well did twitch ever say anything did you, youtube didn't say anything because i never uploaded it after ah. it broadcast that first time it yeah. never was live on any of my channels so there was no evidence of anything that had ever happened it was everyone else posting the content that, ah. that was but it was on his channel though at the end of the day it was on your channel and you did have it saved. It's not like he deleted it. It was still there. And you did go right into play, into gameplay, right? Hence the reason why you didn't get up and wash your hands. I'm just throwing out the scenario the way I remember it. I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong. He's propagating it, not me. So YouTube never contacted me. Mishinima did contact me. You're fired. Right. Because they yeah. were my partnership network at the time. They said, are you okay? Like, what's going on? Did you have, like, a big fallout? And so I was like, eh. You know, it was... <laughs> Nothing really happened. People are laughing at me. I'm laughing with it. I don't, you know, I'm not denying it. I'm just kind of having a really? laugh. Is that the reason why you had Machinima go ahead and take down or try to take down people who had it? They didn't get all of it. They got most of them end up getting that video taken down. Come on, Phil. You've walked down the rabbit hole. You know all this. You know all this. Laugh at it. And it seems like it's working out and everything's fine. So after what? that, Machinima never bothered me about it again. YouTube never contacted me and I wasn't on Twitch. So nothing ever happened in regards to it, which is why it's ludicrous when you hear Phil, he masturbated in front of thousands of children. Millions! Well, there was like 60 people on the pre-stream and no one was watching because it was just the uh, ad part. Now it's very obvious that our boy Quarter Pounder here enjoys his detractor content. So this is the thing. I'm surprised Phil hasn't really completely picked up on all that yet, to be honest. Then again, I don't remember anybody saying thousands and thousands of kids. Like, a lot of that spins on Phil more than anybody else. Running. So no one was even there. It was just a, a honest, innocent mistake. It wasn't some exhibitionist, crazy yeah, stunt yeah. that I pulled. There ain't nobody was there. There were people in there waiting in the pre-stream as they used to, as they do now. What are you talking about? No, there wasn't thousands of people, but there was at least a couple hundred people. At least a hundred. Put the spin in, I guess. The spin in, I guess. Do you know there's like a guy in uh, our group right now who's like streaming this whole thing? He's sort of like semi-famous. 
Oh, I see, I think that's Dark Side Phil. He I'm was the guy that got famous. caught for masturbating in front of children. Yeah, oh, yeah so he, he was caught masturbating. I think he's like 35 <laughs> years old. Oh my god. Yeah, he was masturbating in front of children. That's on right. YouTube. Yeah. Live stream. Hilarious. He's like he's a, he's a pervert or something. I think he's a That's right. I'm a huge something. pervert, guys. That's all I do. I just masturbate constantly in front of children. You're absolutely right. <laughs> That's you what I'm known for. You got exposed for doing that. That's, I got pro That's completely like... exposed. Absolutely. Yeah, you did. You didn't I even know, know the camera was on. You know every inch of you know every inch of my dick and balls. You know every inch of my dick and balls. It's the guy <laughs> watching his Twitch. Is that really him? Is he the yes. one that got caught, Matt? Yes. Really? He was the guy that got caught masturbating in front of children. I think he's I'm like thirty. His he's That's like in his thirties or something. He's in his thirties and he did that in front of children. That's right. Yes, uh, but I'm, I've seen I'm so purpose. much. I'm, I'm a fan. Right. I don't know what to say. <laughs> of course, of course, and I did it on purpose. That's why I'm still on Twitch and I'm still on YouTube and not banned, right? Yeah. So you didn't get banned. You didn't get fired from any MCNs or anything, right? No. You didn't get fired from the cinema. No. 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 No, I didn't. No, oh, you didn't. No. You didn't get released. And what about Laveria? Laveria. Oh what did my they do? God! They dropped you. They no, they didn't. You when I found out <laughs> that video, and I really feel bad for Leanna because she's serious. Actually, if you watch the SOK video, they do say that was one of the reasons why they dropped them was because of the, uh, because of the, uh, the flapping. So <laughs> that part is true. You could say the guy did try to spin it a little bit to make it seem like Machinima got rid of him because of that video. That wasn't the case. Phil got himself kicked off for a whole other reason. But uh, hilarious nonetheless. He has mentally oh problems. Yeah, I feel bad for her. Really I feel personal. bad for her because Leanna is innocent. <laughs> and you're the one. Here we go. Phil has indoctrinated children and send him money blatantly. Milking for money. It's a money pit. It's gone. Just gone. Oh, Snorpernell, please tell me. I hope... Uh, I, I have the utmost faith in the world of Snorpernell, but please tell me that wasn't the best part of that interview. Oh, fuck. That's going to be a long one. Oh, gosh. And there's already a couple people who have gone over it. Uh, Tevin has gone over it. Uh, LSB has gone over it. And James the Lesser has gone over it. I assume Agent Proper will end up doing it, uh, going over it soon. Oh, man. This is going to be a... It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. All right, guys. So we have one more video of the broadcast. So I will see you guys literally in just a second. Like that. This is how I play the game. That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone. Warning. What you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? All right. That's sounds good to me. One can hope. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with the last video. <laughs> here with the last video of our broadcast. Brought to us by Snorpernell DSP. Promoting the lame interview and more begging. And dry pay pigs. <laughs> Too bad his hands weren't dry after the flapping. Oh boy. Here we go. Get something sticky in my hands. It's sticky and I don't know what it is. Ugh. It's excited too. I see a clump of hair on the floor. So I all pick it up. So of course Jasper immediately jumps on it. What's that? What's that? That's how he is. He's a curious cat, right? He wants to see whatever you're doing and be a part of it. He can't believe that I would be picking something up off the floor. He has to be involved in it. He has to know what it is. What is happening here? Look at him. <laughs> so I guess that means you don't clean up very much. What is happening? What are you doing? I really need the vacuum in here. This office really needs to be cleaned up a bit. I, my old PS4 is on the floor over there. <laughs> That's a, This office, oh my god. This office needs a thorough cleaning. It's fucking dirty and nasty. It really is. And by the way, I told. But what about Mister? If I see dirt somewhere, I gotta clean that shit up. I don't want to just leave it there. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't taught that way. I wasn't raised to do things like that. 
I was raised that if something's dirty, you, you take care of it right then and there. What happened to that spiel? Oh, boy. I told you guys Jasper would leave. He's already leaving. I knew it. Whenever I start on a stream and I start talking, he gets bored and he leaves. <laughs> I think it, he likes it when I talk to him. But when it's not me talking directly to him and I'm talking to, like, you guys, he gets, gets kind of... Wait, did you just shut the door? How's Jasper going to come back? Maybe he just had to use the kitty litter, litter box or something. Wow, that's very uh, discriminating of you, Phil. Uh, I don't know if he's annoyed or maybe he just wants the attention for himself and he just leaves. So that's what just happened. He just left. Uh, I did an interview over the weekend with a YouTuber named The Quartering. And he was probably one of the most fair guys I've ever talked to on the internet. And he actually treated me completely neutrally and fairly. Um, rather than some people who have wanted to essentially get a rise out of talking with me and trying to get, like, gotcha questions for their audience and stuff. This guy was completely and utterly fair, had interesting questions regarding myself, regarding my history, regarding, you know, the incident, regarding a million things, right? It was very fun. It was a good experience I had with this guy because uh, it was very fair. And that interview's live on YouTube right now. I already linked it on my Twitter. Uh, got tons of views. Uh, it seems to me like uh, people really like it. What? Question: Did the did the quartering finally uh, link your link your channel down in his in his description like he said he was going to? Just I, I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, you know, it's nice to see that Phil's doing all the promotion, but if you're not getting any promotion back, that'd be unfair, right, Phil? Like kind of like what happened with the whole uh, sponsorship situation with the chair. You know, all that hard work you put in to promote it, and then all of a sudden they dropped you, and you didn't get the free chair, and you did all that promotion for them. Remember that? I remember that. No! And for the first time ever, people are actually, like, understanding my situation and who I am as a person and a content creator rather than just listening to the memes. Uh, and that's a good thing. It seems like tons of positivity has come out of this. So, I'm happy about it. You know, that was the purpose that I did. The guy seemed like a really uh, fair guy. And that's why I decided to do this. And it seems that it has worked exactly as I had hoped. So, that's a good thing, right? Uh, for all of us. <clears throat> So, good stuff. Um, so, yeah, check it out. If you haven't seen it, here's the thing. If you're a fan of mine and you're on my streams all the time, quite frankly, you're not going to learn anything in this interview. <laughs> it's, it's the stuff I've talked to you guys about on a daily basis for the past two years. You know, you guys know all about it. But this is a different thing. Is that this is a different audience now listening and saying, oh, so this is actually who Phil is. This is his situation. You know, this is his life right now. And, you know, maybe it's not just so fun to jump on the, the horrible memes and believe everything we hear because here's the real situation and what's going on. And so I think a few people are actually giving my, my streams a chance for the first time, which is a really awesome thing. Always the thing is, if this interview is as boring as everybody says it is, then they're still going to then they're more often than not going to go to the detractor stuff. So you lose either way. You do realize that, right? Like, I know, Phil, that if I had to guess, if I had to surmise, you're fishing for your new pay piggies and your new, you're looking for your new whales out of this. I get it. I get, I get it 100%. That's what you're going for. You're looking for some new pay piggies and you're looking for a new whale, maybe two. You're not going to do it like that, to be honest. Not if that interview was as one-sided as, as I'm being told. And I, and I have the most respect and faith in Declan Reed, <laughs> and for sure, and Snorpernell. So I'm pretty confident that this was pretty one-sided. Holy shit, this is going to be crazy, dude. It's good to see new people swinging by. If you are one of these new reviewers who today may be giving me a chance uh, you know, to check out my stuff, welcome. I think you're going to have a, a relaxing and fun time. You're going to see that my streams are not all about negativity and nonsense and stuff that, sadly, a lot of people would like to say it is. It is not like that at all. Um, and you're going to you're gonna see that's not what I'm all about. I just want to have a good time with games and my viewing audience. And uh, that's what I, how I've always, been, I've always been, quite frankly, at least for the past two and a half years since I've become a full-time streamer. Things, you know, changed a lot since I was a full-time YouTuber. So. Oh! Oh! And, uh, where are we headed? So very nice, right? So uh, shout out to, to Quartering. Thank you very much for the interview. It was very nice. Worked out well. And that's what I mean. Like, it was a very good weekend uh, on all fronts. So good stuff, right? Being very upfront and honest with all of you. All right? Right now, I really need your support via tips. Just being transparent and honest here. Reason being, uh, in the next two weeks, starting today, a ton of my bills need to start clearing. Today, I got my health insurance bill that clears. Uh, starting tomorrow, we got things like my mortgage, uh, loans, 
credit cards, etc., that all need to pay, get paid. And they all happen within about a week and a half. Now I think about it, is Catherine on his on his uh, health insurance or does she have her own insurance? I'm just curious. I'm just throwing that out there. Because we know Phil doesn't use his, you know, because he says he can't afford it. So does Catherine use it? She's in better shape than you, so theoretically she'd be able to. Hmm. It sucks because it all happens like that. Essentially, it drains my finances completely. Now, sometimes I'm okay, sometimes I'm not. Last month was awful. Last month, uh, I was in a situation where it overdrafted my bank account for over two weeks. By the time I got paid by Twitch, it barely made up for the overdrafts. Quick buck, quick buck, quick buck. L minimum effort, minimum money and time involved, maximum profit. Give their money, give their money. I have to go collect money or something. Milk that fucking gravy train for as much money as you possibly can. Oh, let the money roll in. Hey, money is money. One thing I think about is money is money. Yeah, give me your money. Money sucking tentacles. Oh, come on. I wanted more money. Oh, don't don't tell me how to give you my money. We need more money. We need more money. That's what you know what's funny? When you think about how Phil reacts to people who he considers sellouts and shills, and how they're all about out here to make a dime off anything they can, off any little thing they can, they'll sell they'll sell their integrity to do so. Look at how much he talks about money and obsesses about it and covets it. And as uh, Hannibal Lecter once told us, what is it that we covet? What we see every day. And Phil sees all these other people making all this crazy money and he's not getting a piece of it. And it constantly irks him. But yet he tries to spin that shit like he's the honest guy. You know what I'm saying? You should support him, not all these other people who have already made their money. Very strange. Very strange. The stream is about. Like, my God, please, you gotta tip me because I have no money. And they're doing this streaming and they suck at games. They're not gaming because they're good. They're gaming because they just money comes in for it. And they're doing this constantly. The money is mine and I want the money. But I don't like making money at the expense of others. I was going paycheck to paycheck. Money would come in, pay the bills. Money would come in again, pay the bills. I need to raise a lot of money this month. By the way, I really desperately need the money. So, hint, hint, save the house. I really need the money to keep this house. No lies because I need the money. This this is the year of the cheap cash grab. Since 20, uh, 2008. When I started on YouTube, that's who I've been. The honest guy. And I am very nervous about this month. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> Just being able to afford everything in general. It's been a nightmare. Um, when you guys tip me, your tips are something I get immediately. Those are things that I can put straight towards that. Alright? Straight towards the bills. And all of your tips have been going straight towards the bills and helping me out tremendously, so thank you for that. In fact, last night, I took all the tips that I got from like the last week and deposited them straight into the bank account to start clearing these bills. It's being very honest with all of you, all right? Um, <clears throat> First off, you know that's not true, too. He Everything that he's tipped each day, possibly even each stream, we think he automatically, he takes that almost immediately, especially with big ones. $50, $100, $100 plus tips, those are taken out right away because he doesn't want to risk you charging it back. Now, coming up this month of October, if you guys haven't noticed, We've got quite a lot of games coming out, including, as I already mentioned, the Ghostbusters remaster. Um, I'm going to be interested in these Disney remasters that are supposed to be coming out, including The Lion King and Aladdin. We don't have a release date yet, but they're supposed to be coming out in October. We've got a Plants vs. Zombies game coming out. We've got WWE 2K20, The Outer Worlds, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, The Medieval remaster, The Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz remaster, Luigi's Mansion 3, and whatever horror-themed games I need to get for the Halloween special, plus... Most of that stuff's going to either get is gonna end up getting pepperonied or chill streamed. I can already see that. Like most of this is gonna get ripped. Anything else that happens during the month, right? That's a lot. This is one of the most busy games, uh, busy game months of the year. It's gonna be one. Or of he's gonna skip it. Or, or a few of these are gonna probably get skipped too. Most expensive months of the year for me. So if you tip me on stream, those are funds I can use immediately for those things. Whether it's paying these bills that I need to clear in the next two weeks, or paying for the games for the rest of the month, this is the month where I really need the most support via tips of the entire year. So please... But see, isn't that being a bit dishonest when you could just go to his Amazon wish list and just get the games for him directly right there? 
Why would you give him the... Why would you trust him enough to get the game when you could just purchase the game for him? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. It's an option. Don't don't feel like you have to... This is for any DSP supporters out there who's made it this far. You don't need to give him the money directly. Buy the game for him off of his wish list and then just send him the code. He can't do anything after that. It almost guarantees at least he plays it. May not play it long, but it guarantees that he plays it. Don't sit there and get hit with the whole... Uh, uh, what's that called? Oh, man. Um, shit. What was the name of that game that he scammed the, all those people out of? Oh, boy. I'm sorry. I can't remember what the game was called now. I just... And I, well, it's on the tip of my tongue, and I just can't think of it. Jesus. Eh, it'll come back to me. But, yeah, don't don't get don't get ripped off like that. Like where, I can't remember what the name of the game is, but he, it was like 40, 60 bucks. And he ended up raising somewhere at like 500 plus dollars for it. I think it might have been almost seven. Nah, we'll say five. It was like five, over $500 that people gave to him to get this game. And he, and he still held out until the very last minute. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't get, don't put him, don't put yourself in a position again to let him take advantage of you like that. Just, just don't do it. Please don't do it. Consider tipping me if at all you can. I beg all the time. God, I like what I do for a living and I want to keep doing it. I e-beg, right? You're constantly asking your viewers and your fans for contribution. Thank you very much to anyone who does. I appreciate that. Okay? All right, now we move on to the final segment, which is the shout-out segment. This could be the shortest shout-out segment we've ever had in history because I only have two shout-outs to give as of right now. The first shout-out goes to Prank Black, who resubscribed to the channel for 10 months and said thanks for the unban. So Prank Black personally wrote me a very nice email this morning apologizing for previous behaviors in the stream chat saying that after the interview with the quartering they kind of opened their eyes up to how things are with me and they want to make an honest effort to watch the content and kind of be a, a, a fan who is a, a positive contributor um rather than a negative one and i that actually hit me you know it actually I don't want to say it touched me, but you know what I mean? Like, it actually was meaningful to me that, wow, I guess the interview already has some positive impact, and that's pretty cool. So, uh, welcome back, Prank Black. Hopefully things work out, and, uh, you know, you enjoy the streams, and we all have a good time together, all right? To me, from what you're describing, it's borderline obsession that you're basically throwing tons of money at someone who is not reciprocating the same feeling for you. It's a crush, basically. And if that's the case, you should not be spending money on this person. No amount of buying gifts and, and, and money over the years is going to change someone's feelings about you, all right? So, what I would say is drop it and move on. Phil has indoctrinated children who send him money blatantly milking for money it's a money pit it's gone just gone like that in an instant fucking gone i just care about money that i just can't help it by ebay contributions are mandatory but i need your help i am appealing to got it it's a, a plague tale sorry about that that's what it was a plague tale it's, that's when he scammed all those guys oh he scammed all those people out of that money for that one game. He walked away with like 500 plus dollars off that shit. That, yeah, a plague tale. Do not let that shit happen to you guys again. Please don't. That was embarrassing the first time. Don't let it happen again. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what do we want to play? Let's play... Yeah, let's play this. Hey, yo. I just want to say a uh, shout out to my red bike. It got stolen about a year ago. And I think about you every day. But, you know, now I got a blue bike. And it's not the same, but it's a new life, a new journey. So, uh, rest in pedals, red bike. I love you. I like to bask in the tropics with a flask in my pocket. All right, guys. So, uh, the interview, like I said, I will go over the interview in its entirety. So... Get, just give me a little bit of time on that one. Uh, until then, check out James the Lesser. Check out LSB. Check out um, Almighty Tevin. And 
and for uh, for some of you who have joined the uh, the DIA, I'm sure Agent Proper will eventually go over it. So please look out for all of them. Oh, and uh, Robin's up. They should eventually. They'll probably eventually go over it too. I would hope. Also, Ghostly Winds was on their uh, was on their podcast too. So if you get a chance to go ahead and check out Robin's up, do that. Or Robin's up. Definitely check them all out and whatnot. They make great content too. All right, guys. So. Yeah, we're just going to wait and see what this interview is going to be about. That's all I really have to say about that. We'll we'll take a little bit of time, and we'll make it happen, and uh, we'll see how that works out. Uh, I'm, it's not shaping up very well, apparently. I'm not very confident about how this is going to play itself out, but let me try to be somewhat <laughs> open-minded, I suppose. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't look like this is going to shape up to be a good thing, uh, but we'll see. As for the pay pigs being bled dry... If you guys think it's bad right now, if Phil thinks it's bad right now, wait till Christmas comes around. Because now he has to choose, are you guys going to shower me with money for the holiday season? Or are you guys going to be able to, um, or are you guys going to put your efforts together for me getting the Xbox Scarlet and whatever new releases that come out when that new console drops? No one's thinking about that right now over there. Okay. Over there in northern Galtopia, probably southern Galtopia either, central Galtopia is definitely not thinking of it. Nobody's thinking about that. They really need to. Because, trust me, Phil's not going to save any of the money that he gets this holiday season. To, he's not saving any of that money up to wait for the new consoles. He's going to expect you guys to buy it. And if you guys wanted to see him uh, unbox it and play it day one and all that other ne- uh, nonsense... Someone's going to need to come up in a big way. Planet Jeff, Golden Colt, somebody. Somebody going to need to do it. So look out for that. We'll see how that plays out. But I'll be, I'll be reminding you guys throughout the holiday season. But it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. If, is he going to actually get that console day one? Or is he going to be screwed? Or is, is someone mysteriously going to send him a large tip so he can go out and buy it himself for day, um, day one? We'll see. I don't have a lot of hope in it. But we'll see. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys very much for listening in. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you guys for the next broadcast whenever that may be. Hopefully sooner than later. (laughs) Hopefully. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network of Productions. For the Snow Report, I am your host, slash anchor, GTG. And I'm signing off. As always, sponsored by Snorbucks Coffee. Snorbucks. The best part of waking up is with Snorbucks in your cup. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you guys very much for listening in. Catch you guys later. Peace. Riding my swing smooth like the swing of Ken Griffin And the felt of the velvet. I said hell with a helmet. I can tell that you're jealous of the smell of the shellfish. Don't tell me I need a haircut You can't walk a mile in my shoes Cause I'm barefoot Boss taking the toke God's making the joke With a Mickey man or rookie card Close pinned in my spoke I'm partying with the dead Like Nia De Los Huertos People look at me funny Cause I'm a scarecrow But I don't care bro I'm snacking on apricots I need my space like an astronaut I'm in the sun chasing rum With the juice of a plum In a singing mood And drinking booze like a bomb Someone stole my red bike So I bought a blue one I was sad but fuck it I got a new one Chasing rum with the juice of a plum In a singing mood And drinking booze like a bomb Someone stole my red bike So I bought a blue one I was sad but fuck it I got a new one I wanna live in Bolivia Be oblivious I'm sick of always having to deal with these idiots The ignorance is ubiquitous and it's hideous When I get lucky That's when I'm the wittiest When people don't leave me alone That's the shittiest When people leave their phone at home That's the prettiest Going on a hike Shouldn't be considered hippie shit It's okay to spend some days Away from your affiliates